the last two episodes we looked at a few facts we saw that the permanent fulfillment that we crave for is centered on ourselves this is because i want to see myself as the pleased secure fulfilled me we recognized that everything is changing and so we simply cannot depend on anything here neither fame nor wealth nor people nor things nor desirable situations etc as a permanent source of fulfillment thus no amount of action that we do for gaining any of these can really get us what we are craving for namely the ever fulfilled me we also looked at the possibility that the completeness that we long for could be our own self we had seen that if anything veers away for whatever reason from its own nature it naturally wants to get back to its own nature so since we long for purnatvam at all times since we long to be whole at all times since we long to be free from all lack at all times that itself gives us the insight that wholeness of freedom from all lack is our very nature the only problem is that we don't know it we are ignorant of our real nature we are born with a twofold ignorance ignorance of the world around and ignorance of ourselves as we grew up we certainly shed the ignorance of the world we came to understand our external world and even our bodies and some aspects of our mind using our means of knowledge such as perception inference etc we could come to know about them because they are all things that we can objectify and come to know however in spite of shedding our ignorance of the world we continue to remain ignorant of the true nature of ourselves why because we had no means of knowledge to objectify ourselves to know ourselves let's understand this first i am the subject the one who uses the means of knowledge such as perception to objectify and know things that can be objectified i am the subject how can i objectify myself for example with your eyes you can see everything but you can't see the eyes that see so to you are the one who uses your means of knowledge like perception etc to see you are the subject the knower the one who objectifies to know how can you objectify yourself when you simply are not an object the truth is you cannot know yourself using the means of knowledge such as perception which you use on a day to day basis to know your objective reality then how to know one's real nature thank god for the vedas an ancient body of knowledge that reveals the knowledge of the self just as the eyes are a means of knowledge to see form and color the vedas are a unique means of knowledge to know about the self we will look at the vedas as a means of knowledge in some other episodes for now let's just accept that they are a means of knowledge and so let us see what vedas have to say about the nature of the self we'll start with understanding our usual self concepts usually we say i am declaring that i exist and to that i am we add all kinds of concepts like our profession as in i am a teacher i am a nurse i am a lawyer i am an engineer i am a chartered accountant etc to 
the i am i we add our roles in different relationships as in i am a disciple i am a teacher i am a sister i am a niece i am a friend i am an employer i am a citizen to the i am we add our qualifications such as i am a phd in psychology or i am a chartered accountant you know or i am a fellow of the association of doctors i am a diploma holder in computer programming or even i am a homemaker etc again to that i am we add you know our thoughts as in i am a good thinker i am an intellectual i am dull i am absent minded i lack memory again to the i am we also join it with our feelings as in i am happy i am sad i am angry i am jealous i am kind i am loving and so on to the i am we again juxtapose our physiological functions as i i am thirsty i am hungry i am breathless and we again say you know we add our body's attributes as in i am tall i'm short i'm fat i'm thin then again our i am also extends itself and we say my house my family my children right so all these self concepts are based on our different experiences in living our life do these concepts really point to me I am the one who knows these experiences and these concepts. These concepts all keep changing depending on what my reference point is. Is there a me who is not dependent on any reference point? Who is not dependent on my history or my stories or my experiences? To reveal the self, the Vedas first point out what you are not it, the veda reveals that you are not anything that you experience anything that you know you are not anything that is changing or variable now let us examine ideas about ourselves based on what the vedas have to say it is very clear to me that i am not the walls of the room nor the chair that i am sitting on there are things that i experience that i know in themselves they change and in my own experience they are variable for example when i go outside the room the walls are no more a part of my experience when i start walking the chair i was sitting on is no more a part of my immediate experience so i safely and rightly say that i'm not them I am the one who is aware of them who is conscious of them in my presence in my conscious presence they come to be known however when it comes to my profession qualifications roles in life my thoughts feelings physiological functions my extensions to my self identity through my possessions they are all taken to be me and mine i do not seem to have the same objectivity towards them that i have towards whatever is beyond my skin my profession is something that i know as are my qualifications my roles in life the thoughts in my mind my feelings the physiological functions the body's attributes even all that i call as mine are objects of my knowledge not only do i know all of them they are also variable experiences just like my experience of the walls of the room or the chair that i was sitting on i am the one who is aware of who is conscious of them i am the subject the one who is aware of them they are all objects of my consciousness being the awareer how can i be what i am aware of there is clearly an error in my knowing of myself this error has come about because of ignorance of my true nature that ignorance 
has led me to take myself to be what I'm not. Okay, so the Vedas have clearly pointed out who I'm not. But then, who am I? If all my self-concepts were the truth about me, they should never go away. Yet they replace each other at different times. And in deep sleep, I continue to exist even though none of these self-identities are present. In truth, I am the invariable, the ever-present consciousness in whose ever-presence the variable objects of my knowledge are illumined. That I am a simple conscious being, an immediate, self-evident, self-revealing, conscious presence, different from whatever it is that I am conscious of, is something that I can arrive at even by seeing clearly what I am not and acknowledging my continuing presence. Yet what exactly is my nature is not revealed merely by negation of what I am not. This is where the Vedas, in the form of the knowledge revealed by them in the Upanishads, becomes the means of knowledge for us to recognize our true nature. The Vedas, while negating the historical self being one's truth, reveal that the consciousness that one is, is not a part, property or product of the body-mind complex. The consciousness that one is, is totally independent of the body-mind complex. It is not even energy. This invariable consciousness that one is, the Vedas reveal, is free of all lack. It is pure being. It is the limitless ever-presence, meaning it is present in and through the waking dream and deep sleep states. Consciousness is not bound by time, meaning it is that which always is. It was present in the past, it is present now, it will be present in the future. Consciousness is timeless. It is ever the same, meaning it is changeless and indestructible. Being the subtlest of the subtlest, Consciousness is not bound by space, meaning it pervades even space. Consciousness is not bound by any object whatsoever. This means consciousness is formless and free of all attributes. Are there many consciousnesses? No. Being limitless, there is only one consciousness. Thus, the Vedas reveal that the consciousness that one is, is infinite and indestructible. Consciousness is self-revealing and self-evident. You don't need to be told by anybody that you are conscious. You simply know. It is self-evident. You are the one who illumines every experience. If you as awareness were not there, would there be any experience whatsoever? There would be no experience at all. The consciousness that you are is whole. There is no lack whatsoever in consciousness. The limitations of the body do not affect consciousness. The limitations of the mind do not affect consciousness. New Age spirituality and so-called modern Vedanta could present consciousness as a function of the mind. The consciousness that the Vedas reveal is not a function of the mind. It is that because of which the mind exists and functions. The mind is merely blessed by reflected consciousness. The mind is a thought, feeling, generating machine. Consciousness empowers and illumines the mind and is totally independent of it. You may say to me, okay, 
you have told me all about the consciousness that I am. Yet I feel small, insecure and unfulfilled. How do I own up this knowledge? We will explore that in the remaining episodes. If you have any questions, do write to me at tattvavidya at gmail.com T-A-T-T-V-A-V-I-D-Y-A at gmail.com I would be most happy to answer them. Om Tat Sat.